I'm going to call the meeting to order. I'm not using the gavel, though. Can we please stand for the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So just to clear up any confusion, it's not a regular board meeting. So we don't need a quorum. We don't need to do the gavel. Right, right. Okay. But we welcome John. And we send his mom in the back. And uh -huh. we're having technology. Mm -hmm. Are you going to use it, Alex? You don't have to. I've been told. Oh, sure. I'd like to read it. Okay. Good evening. I don't know if she has handouts. Do you have handouts too, Cindy, or just digital? This is it. This, it's okay. And the only handouts everyone has is we have to make it easy. So, 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 um, I just wanted to go over a couple of this year's highlights before we get into the budget. Um, just remember, this is our fourth and final year of our rollout of our one-to-one -one initiative. Um, we started with a GLP, which every student has an iPad Mini in their class to use. It stays in school. Um, Eden Elementary, we went there next, and every class here has a set of Chromebooks with enough spares in case something misfires or whatever, does something funky that day. Um, last year we went grades 6, 7, and 8, and because the Chromebooks were giving a super price, we were able to add 9 and get a year ahead. Um, they are assigned Chromebooks that they are allowed to take home during the school year. We collect them back in June. This year we rolled out grades 10, 11, and 12. I did want to just share. You know, it seemed like such a daunting goal. <laughs> it did, didn't and it? yet it was quiet. It was quiet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it? So um, the picture at the left are seniors working on five paragraph paper during essentials, where the one to one, um, I'm able to give my students instant feedback on their writing by utilizing Google Google tools. This is uh, Mrs. Amber Clausen. She's an English teacher at the high school. She's also joined us and become one of our tech integrators this year, and she has been dynamic rolling this out and really pushing Google Classroom and doing individual trainings, follow-up trainings, backup trainings. Um, she got some quotes from some of her seniors, which I like, and I, again, you all can read it, but I'll read it for Don's benefit. Um, senior Clay Blaze said, Chromebooks help me stay organized. I have less papers to carry because of all my work is on Google Classroom. And so senior Julia Dombrowski said, it's more like college. This is what we'll be doing when we get there next year, and this prepares us. Um, yeah. So um, I also had one other statement from Mr. Neal, who's also one of our other tech integrators and one of our Spanish teachers, who is a Google Classroom guru. I sent him to additional training just to prep us to get ready for this. He says, I use Google Classroom to post announcements, assignments, such as online homework, quizzes, and tests. I add links for Edpuzzle, Seesaw, Castle Learning, Quizlet, Quizzes, Gimmit, Kahoot. I can also add a link to specific YouTube videos, usually of Spanish grammar that takes the student directly to that YouTube video. Many times I will upload the notes I write on the smart board onto the Google, Google Classroom as a supplement to the notes the students may have taken themselves in case they miss something in their own note taking. Whether or not they are available themselves is, or avail themselves of this is their responsibility. This year I started to create a Cami assignment for taking notes and many students now write their notes in Cami with their Chromebook stylus. So more familiar, they don't have to type it, they can literally write it. This way they can add as many pages for notes as they need and they don't have to worry about buying another notebook. This is optional as some students still prefer to take uh, notes in a notebook. But I just wanted to share some testimonials this year. It really has been great. Um, take it back here. Just to give you some statistics, all in right now, we have 1,261 Chromebooks that are licensed and in play in the school district. That's crazy. Either assigned to classrooms, That's students, true. teachers, or are much needed spares. Mm -hmm. um, an advantage of not being the early adopters of one-to-one -one program, we've benefited from the knowledge of other districts. One recommendation was to have five to 10% spares this has worked really well for us for the loaning of Chromebooks while Chromebook is out for repair. And that's what we do, especially at the 6 through 12. Your Chromebook started acting funky last night. You want us to check it out. You walk into the student uh, technology office in the morning. You see one of the tech integrators, and they'll swap you one for the day. If it is something that needs to be repaired, they'll swap you for, you know, until it's repaired. So we have enough to be able to, to maintain that. Um, we've been ranging somewhere about 6 to 7% in use all the time. So 
um, that just gives you mm -hmm. an Do you idea. find the kids are pretty responsible? They're too? very responsible. I mean, we, you're going to have your kids, kids, you know, but yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, we have a few that end up in, left in the cafeteria or something, but they're all assigned to those kids, so it takes us a minute to find out whose it is and track them down and get it back. Do you have a number on each Chromebook? Yes, yes, and they're assigned a specific Chromebook. And actually, part of what we learned last year with our year one is we've actually made them last summer that the only people, only students that can sign into them are the students. So if you lost your Chromebook and you kind of picked up Ellen's in lunch, it wouldn't do you any, well, any good because you couldn't, you, sign in. you couldn't sign in. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, we offer parents insurance on Chromebooks. And you remember last year's example of the two Chromebooks that tumbled down the stairs Ooh. at the middle school, high school, both shattered their screens. The parent with the insurance paid nothing besides the initial insurance payment of either $25 or $35. The difference between those is the, the theft protection. Uh, the uninsured Chromebook was a $250 bill. Yeah. Just yeah. out of curiosity, how much is a Chromebook? It depends on it depends in the deal. Show. Okay. The deal right gotcha. now. I budget. I budget for what's list price right now. But that's why I said last year okay. they gave us like oh my goodness, almost two hundred dollars off what I had budgeted. That's why wow. I was able to do ninth grade this year. Not so much. One of our scares right now is um, we ordered. I'm just going to tell you. We ordered Jason Awanko uh, new laptop in November. We got it yesterday, this morning. Because it's shipped directly from Shanghai. There you we're go. a little worried about what we need to buy for in this summer with all yeah, the wow. stuff that's going on. Yeah. So yeah, just to just to let you know, which I have no idea when we're going to see Mary. So <laughs> we've also ordered her one, but that's more recently. Yeah. So um, overall, the repairs have been in the range that we've expected. So you know, that's we weren't true. surprised by what we do. Um, we're true. getting you know. Banks, you know, they, they crack a screen or they chip a key off or whatever, or just buzz us out. Remember, these are the lower end devices. It's not like buying a laptop that you would buy at home. Chromebooks are affordable, but they're also more susceptible to some of that minor repairs. Is that what most students would use in college a Chromebook? Um, for speed, you know, did you see that one commercial, and I don't even know what it is, where they flip the table flips over because the girl's running in late to class, and uh, she's like oh, waiting there for her PC to load up, and if the table flips over, and there's a Chromebook because Chromebooks go oh, right, on like, like that, like that. So, um, and most things are now going on the cloud. We still have, like for us, we're also used to putting our Word and our more complex programs on here. The kids are used to doing everything, you know, up on the cloud, and they don't need to have that extra memory and all those things that we have in the a traditional laptop. So yes, we're preparing. You're saying like, what's what that mean? Because I've never had anything <laughs> in the cloud. What does that mean? Um, it means you're storing think, your information in the, up in, up on the internet somewhere, um, on a server somewhere, or else you're using software that's actually up there. That's why we, you, the traditional software is now becoming what we call subscriptions. So you'd have a subscription up on the cloud, and you'd be able to do functionality up there, but you don't have to have it downloaded and live on your computer. And you can pull it anytime you want? Yep. Oh, yep. Wow. Yep. <laughs> you were talking about the cloud. Sure. Yeah, because he was asking that. We have students all over Western New York yep. that are getting services, and they have iPads. So I came back the other day from a meeting with a pretty significant student with a disability at Liquidus, and I said, Kevin, we need this and this from the cloud. And now that's way down there. He pushed a button that was already on that student's, because he's blind and, and oh, visually wow. impaired it, and hearing. Yeah. Kevin got it like this. It was already, it, look, we just say, email us, it's here. I mean, it's on the, his uh, what do you get, uh, iPad. He's got an iPad. He's got an iPad. So this could be all you need for college is the Chromebook. You, that could mm -hmm. be. Depends on what you're studying, but yes. So if you were an art major, you might need to have something that could handle an Adobe or program more or whatever. Yeah, more technology, technology yeah. right. Yeah. So overall, like I said, the repairs have been, been, have been what we've expected. Um, our recycle replace schedule Chromebooks are estimated to be three or four years of life. We are hoping to get closer to the four or five. Remember, in the state recommends and in our tech plan, most technology is supposed to be six years. Chromebooks, they understand, could be a little iffy. Um, it's early days yet. We're only in year two, really, for the ones that are going home. But uh, one of the plans to help us extend their life is the reason we collect them. I know that's a question that I've gotten from parents who are like, why do you take all that effort to collect them in June? Well, that's going to help us extend their life because there's two months a year that they're not using it. And also, we're really trying to promote that these are learning tools that you're using for school. Mm -hmm. There's pretty few kids that are using anything at school school related during the summer. As a matter of fact, one of my texts mentioned today, yeah, they don't have all summer to try to break our, our security. Yeah, right, yeah. So, so one of the things is that we're hoping, uh, right now they're showing, you know, 
reasonable wear and tear. I mean, you know, so we're, we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Um, probably, and uh, Laura knows this, one of my things is that we have to license the Chromebook license to use it on the Chromebook. Um, there's been a major upgrade on that, like from our first generation that came in here at the elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, I have to, I had to re-license them before I had to replace them, which is kind of funky. Like you wouldn't have that happen huh. on a on a Mac or a PC. So yeah. um, again, early days. We're trying to figure some of that out. So um, other areas have changed this year. Um, the new digital security system, it's just about complete. We added some cameras actually here in the district office somewhere. Uh, they're hopefully going to be installed next week, and then that project will be done. Uh, the new clock and PA systems, again, yeah. we're just about done with that. We added some new um, devices to go into the new um, high school main office that's being built, so they'll be coming in soon in the next couple weeks, and then that project will be done. It's really neat. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, makerspace classrooms in all three buildings had technology pieces, and we were involved in, in those implementations. Uh, the CAD lab programs, we moved into the, well, up at the high school, let me explain, before we had Chromebooks, we had um, two standalone Mac labs, one down in the technology that any teacher could sign up and take out, or one in the library. This year, because everybody's got Chromebooks, they're not going to use it. Uh, Mr. Jones, who's the CAD uh, teacher and uh, department chair for technology, uh, we really wanted to expand his CAD program. So if you ever have a chance to go up to the high school, see it now. He now has two rooms, one with the tr traditional drawing tables, and then the other room next door, we took the uh, original Mac computer lab and turned it into a CAD lab. We were able to add more CAD computers, so he's been able to expand his program. So um, that was a really success. Over here at the elementary school, we still have our instructional uh, lab with Mac computers in it, but the library lab, we removed those this year, and that is now their makerspace up here. I think she's left four in there for stations, but again, trying to repurpose, but that's also a way for us to maintain our budget, which I'm going to slide this into budget a little bit, uh, by this rotating out of buying uh, less expensive Chromebooks and not having to replace some of these higher end Mac computers or PC computers. Um, it's a way that I'm able to try to start to balance those numbers and balance my hardware budget. Um, our current tech plan is the one, is the one to one initiative. Uh, our prior tech plan was to install interactive whiteboards or the, everybody knows smart boards district wide. Um, we completed that this year with all the classrooms, I like to caveat this, that wanted them. We had a couple science teachers up at the high school that says, I, I really wouldn't use it, we're all about the labs, you don't need to put them in here. But anybody that needed them or wanted them, they're, they've been installed in the classrooms. But again, it was our previous plan and it took us six years to get here. Um, we're starting to recycle this year. So our, our original adopters, which I think were several up in this building, um, they were replaced this year. So that's kind of where we are this year going into next year. So now I'll talk about budget. <laughs> um, if you look at the sheets, one of the things that Laura and I were just looking at uh, prior to starting here is that um, the second line down, that 2110-400, is actually not my line. <laughs> it's, Laura and I just said, but we're trying to figure out, besides, because most of the other 2110 numbers are my line, so it's sticking in there. So just deduct $63,000 out of my budget, because that's not my budget to manage. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Um, everything else I would really like to just point out, if you compare my this year's proposed budget against this actual this year, um, I either stayed where I am, or we went less, except for the very first one, which is the central data processing. And I did want to talk about that for just a second. Um, the 1680 BOCES line, you'll notice, I was able to keep the same or reduce for every other line for next year. Um, the reason that that line is going up, and Laura and I work on this together mutually all the time, is I manage all the BOCES services that are anything technically re related. Our HR system, board docs, um, uh, I direct. I, so everything falls into this line, and um, anything that's a service or a subscription, it's going up. There's just there's just no two ways about it. Um, and I wanted to give you a really good example that came into my office late yesterday. Um, one of the things that we get through there is a subscription called Discovery Ed, which is a video service for primarily our STEM units, yeah. math, science, and social studies, and it's directly tied to the social studies program K-8. Uh, last year I went through BOCES because I was able to save money versus us doing it on our own, and I'm paying this year like 3400 
I got the bill yesterday for next year or the quote. It's seventy four hundred dollars. It went up four thousand wow. dollars. I just told Laura. I said I haven't even had a chance to tell you about that one. Um, but that's just to give you an example of how hard it is to manage this BOCES line. Mm -hmm. Part of what we've done is try to um, reduce where I could, you know, cut down anything that we could have, but redundancy or whatever. Um, I am a little worried about next year. I I don't know if I can cut my other lines anymore to try to help balance this. I just want to give you guys a heads up that. BOCES is what BOCES is almost at this point. Um, some additions that we've had in the last little bit here is going to be this digital security system and the digital PA clocks. I tied them into BOCES for, to keep up with the upgrades and further servicing. So that will be a new item. Uh, professional learning plan, which is something we just are tying into this year. Um, that's a way to, to track um, to teachers PD. Um, there's so many of the younger teachers have to put that all in there for hours and things up to the state. Um, this is a this is going to be a good way to help them out. But again, an additional cost to BOCES. Um, also, there's been an increased cost to our security posters. Um, we're really combating the ever constant threats now, cyber crime and ransomware. And BOCES has been really stepping up to the plate. Sandy and, and Laura and I had some meetings with them. Um, we just really wouldn't be able to keep the security on our network and our systems without their help. So those are some of the new things. Um, and the, BOCES costs are going up too? There are. That's it. I said, if you look at it, you just see that that's the one line I just can't, I just can't get and any part more of than your, I have. <laughs> part of your increase in the line two and everything is Ed Law two. Yes. I was just going to say, the Ed Law two, and that actually um, is going to be great. I mean, it, they're, they've already helped us so much. Um, Ed Law 2, which goes effective July 1, um, has some really hefty unfunded mandates and uh, that we're really trying to deal with. And again, it's, they created a new consortium in BOCES, and uh, they're going to start it's charging us for it next year, but we've been in it kind of for free this year while they get their feet under them. And they've already been able to help me get so much of uh, the new policy. Well, I think I think just just in talking about the Ed Law is most of our board policies are a page or two. Right. Right. Maybe attendance might be a little longer. This one was fourteen pages. Fourteen pages. Fourteen pages. Just to wrap my brain around it, when it came yeah. in, Sandy goes, "Can we talk?" I said, "Can I have a week?" <laughs> <laughs> I really need to study this one because it's fourteen pages yeah. long. So yeah. So yeah. Plus, I want to point out. When we're talking the BOCES aid, our eligible expenses for aid, so in 21-22 we should get 0.67% back on the eligible expenditures that we do through BOCES. So there is some assistance there. We also, um, Lucinda, we set up that technology reserve last year. We're going to use it this year for the mm -hmm. first time for her equipment. And then we get in State aid, we get $24.20 per student for hardware aid. We get $14.98 per student for software. Now, she just talked about a $4,000 increase. We know that that $14.98 doesn't go very far. Yes. But these are some of the expense-driven aids that the governor is talking to roll into the foundation aid formulas. Mm -hmm. Which makes why we both turn a little green when that happens. It's like. Yeah. We're trying so hard right, right now, and I can't imagine what this will happen if they go forward with this. So, okay. any other questions? Mm -hmm. Kind of. I, I, I just need. Hey, yes. So, are you looking at any say. major purchases uh, for computer equipment or stuff like that? So, uh, Jay Owanko's thing is not Corona uh, supply chain related, but I've been on two two meetings this week and. Uh, the real supply chain bottleneck is actually going to come late April into early mid He's talking outside the education. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, because yeah. he does that. Yeah. 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 So, so. so if, you, if you need to purchase anything, I would, I would probably get it on so order can't now. Do it or we can't. You need to tell him we can't. In, in May or yeah. June, yeah. you're going to be right in the middle <laughs> Another, of the supply chain. Right here. July. I know. Yeah. That, and that's one of our concerns is that. Um, It'll be primarily um, because we've leveled out. Think about it, this, the seniors had their Chromebooks for one year, so I'm going to be able to recycle them, but it's going to be my sixth grade is always going to be where I'm going to need a new set of Chromebooks. So um, it may be that I get very lean on my spares to be able to get those sixth graders their Chromebooks at the start of school because I cannot place my orders because I do go through BOCES to July 1, which is going to 
we're going to try to get everything in line and get it up there, which I usually do, and try to have it there the last week of June so that it's like ready to put, put, me, put it through, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, I'm anticipating that Laura's going to hear me crying if I hire college kids to help me out and they go back to school two weeks before the end of August and my equipment doesn't come in until the first week of September. But that's it's still a be, long way to go. Maybe it, this will yeah. ease up a little bit. We're hoping. So, but there was a shortage last year, too. So I was going to say, it was it, tough it, last year as well. It was tough last year. Yeah. yeah, we won't have them in time. We haven't even started to see the supply chain effect yet. Of the yeah, we yeah. will not see these. I know. Yeah. So we're, we're coming up with a plan B. Mm -hmm. So we're trying. Okay. But nothing major, major. Like, I don't have any, like, servers or anything. So it'll, it'll, be, it'll be shuffling Chromebooks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Good question. Anything else? No. And we were right, we crossed off that 63,000. Yes, that's not mine. That's not mine. Okay, I want to make sure. It goes somewhere else. It goes somewhere else. But not to, but not to you. Not to me. No, okay. thank you guys. We'll mail the person who goes to All right. I'm going to switch to Mrs. Johnson. Okay, special education. Okay. Hi, Dad. It's Sean Johnson. Well, the first one that I was looking at yeah. wrong with. I yeah. decided that I need to see. Thanks, I'm bad. Okay, got it. Each one is there. Keep going. Oh, this one's this one. Who is that bad man on the phone? Did I do that? No, I did not. She's taking care of you. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. All right, I, I don't have um, any slides. I don't have. Did you hand out my budget? Yes, yeah, we did. did. Is it yeah. the same as what we did yesterday? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No slides. No. No. I, at least one slide. I, I just, you don't want slides. You I just want to put okay, on Sean. record that Sean has been asking for me to take her off the listserv on the computer for two weeks now. So as, I don't think I should have I keep to attend any more admin meetings. <laughs> she's I'm getting a bit mouthier, too. That's what I said, Sandy. What are you going to do? <laughs> she's getting just a bit mouthier. Oh, yeah, one week left. She's yeah. at the door. Why would you do a slideshow? Yeah, that ain't yeah. Sean, just so you know, oh Sean, Sean, Sean is retired right? yeah. on the 16th. Mary, and actually, right, so. Mary was here tonight, but Sandy and I, she, her two boys were in a concert. At and she made it. She, said. she made it. She texted me. Yeah, yeah she, she made, made it. it so. I'm like, go. Because oh, I was yeah. supposed to be, and then Lucinda and I got switched, so I just told her to go. So you know what? She could do the next 15 years. I didn't. Miss <laughs> She'll have to do the slides. She'll have to do double She'll slides. She'll do the slides. She's going to take the slides. I don't even know how to do slides. And I'm not going now. Um, so my budget uh, is all basically, you know, student driven um, for special ed. And really, there's not a lot of talk about except one area when you look at it, which is the budget code of 464 is 2250461. Where was it? 2250? Two, two, they're all 2250 at the beginning. Yeah. Four, six, and then 464. Other, yeah, 464, the zero zeros after? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other HC services. That's handicapping services. So you'll see a dollar change of $160,000. That's a lot of money. Yes. But there's a reason for this. Well, you're going to tell us. And I'll let Laura touch. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of money. Good move. It is, but it it is. It's um, Sean's parting gift. That's my gift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're riding off in style, a big RV. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> no, no, it's her parting gift to us. She contracted out for more OT and PT services and speech as well. I believe yes. that the students need and require in their IEPs. Yeah. Okay. I mean that's that we are our numbers are incredibly high. Wow. Does that include your three and four year olds too, Sean? No, we don't okay. pay anything. The district does not. So the pay county pays those. County this pays is just your five to twenty one. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. so it's additional one hundred and sixty thousand. Wow. But 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 let me explain why it looks high like that, because we budgeted in the budget previously for an OT and PT in the general fund for, for that. In these. In the salary code. The salary code. Which would be about what, 80? No, no, because we need 2.0. 2.0 OTPT? OTs. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So uh, when our probably about 80. Each. Yeah. So about 80, 80 each. Right. So when our OT Jack passed away, um, I had got, at that time I talked to Darren, the, um, the union president for CSEA, and we, we all agreed um, it was a very sensitive time, so we, high, we contracted. And we've been doing that for the last couple of years, and we're in agreement. And now, so that balances it, out, doesn't it? It, it? it totally balances out. It looks like a lot, but it balances out. But then the increase of students with OT—it was Jack just doing it. Now we have two, 
and we have a point for speech that we used this year that because beginning of the year we didn't have enough speech it was at GLP and um, parents were very angry at me and we were doing our best to try to get everybody in and so we were able to um, use it's an agency called Tools to Grow I don't know if you've heard of Tools to Grow mm -hmm. they're awesome mm -hmm. and we're getting we have a point for two days a week and it comes in and picks up and we know we're gonna probably need it next year and the reason that I feel I don't want to hire a speech therapist because we might not need it the year after, and I don't want to lay somebody off right. on the job. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, we just don't know. And the same with the, the numbers. So that's why that went up. Um, really, the rest didn't go up at all. I mean, a little bit. Um, and we went down, if you look at the line. The tuition went down. Yeah, but let me tell you, don't get excited. Oh, okay. Um, that went down because one of our students that's at a private placement, which means it's a program for students with emotional and behavioral needs, is graduating. With Yay. Just, just, Yay. just talked to him on the phone yesterday. And um, so I didn't account for him, and we had others move, but that doesn't mean you another one will come up. Mm -hmm. Somebody will come along. Or two yeah. or three. Uh, or yeah. 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 And then both these, um, Really, that's a little. I don't know what we do with that 781. Is that still there? Yeah, it's just a little blip up, just I, to cover some of the other costs that we thought <laughs> might go through that line that we weren't really sure of at no, the time. No, we weren't. But that's it. Uh, my nursing supply. My nurse. I, I uh, budget for all the nurses. Stay the same. Zero change. You know, because I'm going to tell you, they board things. There is band raids around here. We have all that kind of stuff, so we don't need to order a lot. Are of they all, all ready for the for the you know? No. The, the, COVID? Yeah, for the virus. As much as what Sandy leads us to be, we have all that information out there and everything. So, yeah, we're yeah. good. Mm -hmm. We're following protocol. We're good. Yep, they're, we're actually good. They're really, really good. We have a head nurse now. And you know, Sean, so. there's, it, it, there's been such a change in this department since uh -huh. I came in 2013 when there was no summer school when you didn't have your children with special needs in one room with a dedicated aid or a special ed teacher, where your special ed teachers were moving around all day long, just not even really sure of what they needed to do. And and it's made a difference. Well, it has. It, you know, you look at how I started 15 years ago, and we have doubled in our enrollment in special ed. Like, That's what I was going to ask you. Doubled open? since I've been here. That's crazy. And when I started there... What, what do you think the reason for that? Uh, the, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Every district, mm -hmm. general town, frontier, yeah. 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 everywhere. Is it like drugs and things like that? No. It, it, no. no. It is... Um, you have so many I think be autism, better I identification. It's... It's just it's the amazing. needs. I, 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 I wish I could make a million dollars mm -hmm. if I knew, you know, with the baby. And it's all sorts of disabilities. We have a lot of kids with genetic disabilities. We have kids with just simple learning disabilities that need mm -hmm. reading support. Or we have just speech. So the numbers are there. But it's everywhere. So it's not just mm -hmm. eating. It's, it's everywhere. Because I, when I was getting uh, acquainted, and I, I the, the people in the in the first in the primary school mm -hmm. said that some of this tremendous learning mm -hmm. there. Um, I don't know if I did that, but um, I because you also know they're developmental. They're little kids. They need mm -hmm. time to learn, um, and they have a great program over. Yes, I know which, that. Which is fun. It runs a lot of it. That helps. I got to credit them because their numbers aren't as high there because they do the RTI and all the early stuff, but when they get almost to second grade and it's still, we see more of an increase because they've gotten all that early intervention, mm -hmm. still not working, then they will come into special ed. Mm -hmm. The children that I see high percentage of with disabilities at that level is speech. Yep. A lot of speech and language yep. issues. Lots, really? Lots. Well, that's why we had to hire a dog of speech yeah. and language. Really? But we're yeah. also taking that earlier too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we're, yeah, we're getting them when they're two, so yeah. we're responsible when they go from two to three-year-olds to take it. When I started, I had 10 CPSC, that's Committee Preschool Ed Kids, 10 in this district. Mm -hmm. I am now in annual reviews for two full weeks. We have about 50, three full wow. weeks. Wow. Now, how do they, yeah. they refer kids that young to you even though they're way below school? Age? Yes, that, I can explain that really quick. If they're birth to two years old, usually a doctor, the hospital picked a pediatrician, they get services for early intervention. I don't know about them. But once they turn three, the district is the middleman for the oh, really? committee of preschool oh. special. It doesn't cost the district anything. But I 
They, I, they get referred, I run the meetings, I make sure they have the services wow. that they need, I monitor them, and then when they turn kindergarten, then we kick in to what we need to do. So and yes, so you are responsible from three years old to 21 years old in every district oh my in the United States. Really? Yes. So from three to five, it, 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 we don't pay? Right. No. The county, Erie County, pays for all evaluations and all subsequent services. I just send the middleman with the paperwork. That's still a big job, right? It's a huge job. It's, it's big. It is, um, we have actually one secretary in my office that's devoted most of her time to preschool. And she's thrilled to be at GLP because she gets to see the little she ones. She gets to see now. babies. We see, we call, like, we call them our babies. Mm -hmm. We have meetings all day today, tomorrow, and all next week I'll be retiring with finishing all the little ones. But think about it. Our kindergarten class is, what, 78? What is it, mm -hmm. around there? Mm -hmm. uh, about 86. So almost half of the kindergarten, the four-year-olds, have special needs. Yeah, yeah. But, but... By the time kindergarten first, we're declassifying mm -hmm. a lot of them. We have fixed them. Really? Yes, and they're moving on. Yes. You work with the parents also? Oh, my gosh, yes. yes. And we're very good in this district. Our staff and everybody working with the parents. Our parents are very, um, we teach them to advocate for their kids and, and learn their needs. And they're, they're awesome. Our parents are awesome. So that, but that is no cost, but it's just cost in time. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a tremendous. Yeah. And when you look at my budget, can I just say this real quick? I mean, it's, this we're talking special ed, but the PPS office is also homeless, migrant, free and reduced, ESL students, um, incarcerated students. Incarcerated students, oh foster God. care students were in charge of. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody but incarcerated is my favorite. Part. And we have to pay for that too. Any kid that's hospitalized. The group you know, homes come through you? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All the group homes, we have two group homes that we The have. immunizations come out of your office? All now? medical comes oh, out of right. my office. It's the doctor of the district comes out of the office. Mm -hmm. the, it, it, so this isn't, isn't a bad budget for all the services that we do mm -hmm. at all. No, no we, we actually did an audit on this. Um, it was the year that you came, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to speak about that for a minute? Um, Don Ogilvy? Who was it? No, it wasn't. It was... It was Dan something from Bobsey's. So yeah, I we, can't I can't, I can't, I can't recall his name either. But we did hire someone who has a lot of experience in taking a look at districts and doing audits on it, and said that our budget here, what he was amazed at, what we were able to do, at such a low um, percentage of the annual budget mm -hmm. for PPS. And our my, if you look at the overall budget, it's staffed because that's what I need is people to work with our shifts. That's all I need. We can make everything else happen. So it's a great budget. I'm going to turn it over to my next Mary Maxim, who's my replacement. I think we're in a good place with it. We still have about four districts paying tuition to come to our programs. We have East Aurora, Springville, North Collins, and Orchard Park pay for their kids to come to our special ed programs through their committee special ed to me. And um, we have enough room for them? Mm -hmm. I won't take them if we don't. But that's how it keeps us floating sometimes, is their money. Really? Mm -hmm. That's revenue. And the group homes, what kind of group homes are they? These are group homes. Any, they, the one that I'm working with closely now, they uh, start, the clients start at 18 years old there. Um, and we're responsible for 18 to 21 for their education. Is it is 18 through 21, or when did they just, is it? 21, once they age out of 21. They age out of 20, when they hit 21, they age out. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. And so we're responsible for them, and we get 100% reimbursement for their education. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, um, and we have a, the group home, the new one, most of the students that we have in there are un, um, are autistic. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So they're doing, and, and we, I was out last week to see the student in the program, and he's fantastic. He's doing a great job. It's awesome. Good. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Oh, this is great. We'll all miss you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Is that your? Oh no, no, that's Don. No, that's Don. It's Don. Don's on yeah. the phone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Seth does both of them. No, so he can hear me. Oh, <laughs> you need the phone. Yeah. yeah. Well, I really don't because I have a big mouth. But we'll be nice to Don. Yes. You want this? Oh, Sean. Yeah. You have a very big job. This is tiring. That is why I'm retiring. Oh, Don, I know you're down here. It's a, it is a huge yeah, you All right. Now we're going to talk about the BOCES budget. And the first thing I want to talk about is that currently in the 2021 school year, we received 0.67%, in other words, 67 cents for every dollar of eligible expenses that we purchased of BOCES services last year. 
That is the item that is in jeopardy that the governor is looking to roll the BOCES aid, the hardware aid, the software aid, textbook aid, and library aid into our foundation aid. And then we can no longer predict the cost because we won't be getting reimbursed in the same method that we currently are. So even though there may or may not be a change in how we get our funding from the state aid and the amount, we won't have any way to project it for the budgetary process other than what the governor's runs give us. And so, again, it may impede the ability for school districts to share services that we currently do. This is from New York State, correct? The reimbursement right now? Yes. So we use BOCES for purchasing, we use it for personnel, we use it for our public information officer who helps us with our Facebook, we use it for a safety coaster, we use it for our central data, we use it for some, in, um, let's see, we use it for some curriculum, we use it for staff training, we use it to, for um, assistance with supervision for the administrators. They do research and development for us. They do in-service trainings. They work on programs for disabilities. Even though we don't get it, BOCES aid on those, we get high cost, public access cost aid, which ironically, if I look at the numbers, is 0.609 of our costs, which is less than our BOCES aid, but we still get aided for that. And what happens with BOCES is school districts come together and instead of us hiring somebody to help Lucinda part-time for three hours a week with the new Ed Law 2 specifics, two or more districts go to BOCES, they hire the person and we share in the costs. It has to be two or more for us to share. So we use them for in the school library. We, the biggest thing that we use them for, other than special education, the next biggest line item is our occupational education. So all in all, we use them for a ton of services, including training our bus drivers. So for the 2021 school year, you're gonna see an 8.9% increase, or $229,774. That's the increase for BOCES services that we're hoping that we will get some state aid returned on in the 21-22 school year. Any questions about BOCES? Wait. You said that the increase is 229000 Yes, it's on the very last page. Yeah, I see that, yeah. In the grand totals in the change column. And what is that? You write down then seventy five thousand one seventy eight sixty. What does that represent? That represents on your sheets. I took out the IT and the PPS because I felt there was no need for us to rediscuss what has just been presented. So really, other than theirs, it's only one hundred fifty four thousand five hundred ninety five dollars for the rest of the. District. All right, and the two of them adds up to the two twenty nine, right? Yes. Okay. And what do you think we'll know? What the story is for the reimbursement? Uh, March 31st, hopefully, if we have an on-time budget, which we typically have. All right. Okay. Can I tell one thing, you, at least in mine, I don't know if I was the only one that, for the central data processing, you had it highlighted in yellow? That's because Lucinda just presented it. That was her IT. The ones highlighted in yellow are totaled at the bottom. They're the 75,000 number. Oh, okay. And those are the ones that were just discussed. Because it's highlighted on the next page, too. Oh, it's highlighted twice? No, no. There's, there's another figure highlighted. There's two other figures highlighted. This is oh, I see. That's the 75,000. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Go ahead and All set? Yes, thank you. You good, Don? Hello? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought we thought I put you to sleep. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think he's snoring. <laughs> he's <driving. laughs> yeah, he's driving. Let's hope he's not driving. Oh, then let's not put you to sleep. Okay, so now we're going to talk about staffing, and I'm going to start the conversation about staffing. As you can see, in 2019-20, we've had some anomalies that have occurred that don't typically occur. So we had. 
a retirement mid-year for after the budget was presented for last year we found out that our clerk typist in the high school middle school was going to retire and then we had a retirement of our head mechanic foreman and so as you can see we have the breakage which that number that says subtotal breakage for support staff breakage is the cost savings between the old person's salary and the new person's salary so for our support staff our mid-year retirements this year we had five thousand twelve dollars our mid-year retirements for our certified staff included our PPS director, it included a teacher, and it included a librarian. So no, the no, Sandy's a teacher. Oh, Sandy's a teacher. Oh, pardon me. Two teachers. Two teachers. Sorry, got my names confused. Two teachers and the PPS director. So our breakage, the difference between the veteran staffs salary and the new person's salary was $122,000. So all total, the district saved on retirements $127,357. But the district had needs that have occurred for staffing. Some of the needs are long existing corrections that needed to happen based on cuts that were made during the fiscal crisis in 2011-12 and forward. So, for example, in the business office and the buildings and grounds office, we shared a secretary. With the reporting requirements that the business office is doing to SED so that they can track and know everything that is going on and every decision that is being made, we cannot sustain a half secretary. But last year we had in the budget some funds to add some additional part-time secretarial assistance that didn't come to fruition. So our addition in, was less for that position. Our buildings and grounds secretary, she will transfer at the end of the month when the new person starts in my office, she will transfer over to buildings and grounds full-time. In this building, our head laborer, we'll call him, he went out and he took the civil service test to become a custodian, which is a higher pay grade level, and then he started to get canvas from other districts. Oh, pardon me. So in order to preserve the position, we raised his pay up to the custodian level. So that's Mark Stevens, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah, not Mark Clark, right? Yep, Stevens. sorry. Yeah. Then, well, is that a mistake? Mark yeah, Clark? Yeah, it's supposed to be Mark Stevens. Mark Clark retired. Yes. And then in transportation, we created a transportation supervisor, which was cost neutral, but that left us with a vacancy over there for a head bus driver to help with orchestrating. We have to ensure that every bus goes out, every driver is spoken to before they get on the bus to make sure that they're not medically or physically impaired in some way that would make it dangerous for them to be driving students. And yes, somebody might show up from work, for work in a condition that they shouldn't be driving a bus because they feel that they're responsible for picking up the students. And we have to do a visual inspection. The last several years, our now transportation supervisor was working 50 to 60 hours a week to ensure that happened. So. We were able to use some of these funds to, per, to get a new head bus driver to assist with that. And again, they are getting increased requirements and reporting as well from the state. So pretty much one way or other, we have a staff member who enters the bus garage at 3 in the morning, that's Ricky, and we close the bus garage down at 4.30, but yet we have buses that come in after that. So five days a week, even when we have a staff development day, our buses are rolling. And so we're thrilled to have um, that second person, the head bus driver, back again. We had it for a year, we lost it, we brought it back. And then we had, we have the new immunization law, which is requiring much more paperwork. Yeah. So the Board of Education approved a head nurse in order to track the immunization and some of the reporting for the district. So that stipend is new. 
Yeah. The so other that, thing so that's that defined. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, go ahead. I was just going to say that those are things that you would have done before, right? Right, right. right. And she does more than that. Right. Yeah. I was just going to say. So it, what were what our expectations with Stefania? Sean and I worked really hard on this one yeah. too, is to make sure that all of the nurses across the board can do it all. And if you remember too, we have nurses on school buses. On school buses. I know right? that. Yep. Yeah. So <coughs> so. I mean, what a load that must have been. Uh, it, it is a huge load off of right. my position. Sure. Um, it, I taught to Stefania how to do the immunization thing. She did it with me this year, so she knows because Mary won't know how to do it. Um, and She's going to help schedule the nurses on the buses. Oh, we do sports physicals. We do. You know. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's out of my office, too. It was too. yours, yeah. Yep, sports So physical. now they'll all be hers. All be hers. And she, yeah, and she is so good at mm -hmm. Oregon. Oh, my yeah. gosh. But she does yeah. ask me every single day. I'm like, you're on your own. You're going to yeah. do this. But it, it's, it is... The requirements for the immunization is bigger, but there's so many other issues too. But we also appreciate it just in the transition of Sean. When right. you've been here yeah. a long time, you just yeah. start to do things, just, and you just it. don't pay attention to it. And all of a sudden, when you realize you've been sitting with Mary of all the things that you do, she didn't realize that when she interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> and she's still here. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. She texts me. She'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> all right. She said she went to a concert. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Her child, yeah. So then the next position that we were able to put in was a PPS department chair. Again, that helped Sean in her role. Hey, you guys give me everything when I leave. Have you thought about this? I've asked this for years. Now I got a chair. We tried to get you to stay. <laughs> but Sean's leaving. <laughs> so then at the GLP. It shows that you're irreplaceable. And you need that like three people. Yeah, to replace you know, I'll be at the moody bin. Because <laughs> but, but think about that, Sean. I mean, in the conversation, the big part. So as long as it makes everything keep going, that's all it so now we'll move on to the things that we've done in this school year with that breakage money. We increased for an AIS teacher 0.3 at the GLP to help with the extra needs of the students so that hopefully if we get them enough services in the lower grades, they won't need as much expensive care in the higher grades. And because when we hire a part-time teacher, the part-time teacher is an annual appointment. They're hired from July 1st to June 30th. Our librarian left at the GLP on February 26th. We <coughs> need to replace it with a full-time librarian or we're not going to be able to hire a staff person. Because otherwise you'd be hiring a part-time person from March to June. And then you'd be back into the role of trying to hire for sure. the September 1 start. So I was oh, really okay. grateful for Laura for finding that, so we only had to do this once. And then we have an instructional leader now at the GLP. And then we had at the high school, middle school, we had, um, for some of the specials, we had a .07 increase. We went back to full time in science. Yes. And then in history, we needed to increase to offer, have more offerings for students, so we were able to bring on 0.5 FTE for the social studies. So our new positions ate up $117,862 of our breakage. So our money left over after our retirement savings is $9,495. That's just what we did for staffing in the 1920 school year for needs that we've had within the district. Okay, so that's just kind of bringing you up to speed of where we are today. Now let's talk about next year's budget because I wanted to do that because this is the first year since I've been here that we've had the mid-year retirements and I thought it was important to collectively see what happened and what did we do with those retirements. So now for 2021, we are having, if I've got this right, five teachers, one librarian, and a psychologist retiring. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. We will save $274,498, the difference between the current people's salary and the new staff salary. Wow. So again, without having to go back to the taxpayers or the state and asking for more money, we're doing some more efficiency and right sizing for the district so that we are offering the students as much as we can possibly offer them to fit their needs. So 
that has become in the high school, middle school, you will notice if you go over there today, you see two senior clerk typists in the high school, middle school office. And when the high school office is finished, you will see one in each office. There is no backup for them when they go on lunch or breaks at this time or they're off sick. We have to go to the sub list. We have to take someone from another office, perhaps the tenants, perhaps the assistant principal, athletic office. So what we're proposing in the budget is to include a part-time clerk typist for 19 and a half hours a week to support those two offices. Then we're going to be looking at increasing and restoring foreign language. Foreign language. Spanish. Spanish, Spanish. to 1.0. So this is an exciting one. So uh, Lori Cole has accepted the Pell to come back to full time for next year. Um, it is an increase mm -hmm. as well, but it was also a Pell uh, dating all the way back. I was looking through some of the MOUs all the way back into the 2013-2014 school year. Mm -hmm. So this comes back again okay. to years ago when we were trying to um, really make ends meet after the recession and, and do some right sizing between the elementary and the secondary. And so i um, super excited about, about this position going back to full time. We're going to restore the FTE to be determined in the business department. Right now we're budgeted for 0.17. We're just a placeholder just looking to see what we can restore to that department what, based on the needs for the technology. Again, social studies has some needs for restoration, so we're looking at whether or not we'll be able to do a 0 0.17 increase there. This is all so Alex Beasley would be 0.67 yeah. then no. next year? No. No. no, it would be the position. So, so this is a Pell. Okay, so whenever, when, if we were to increase that social studies position, just as we did when we brought on the 0.5 this year, we have to put it back out to the people who are on Pell. Um, Alex Feasley is a part-time, which means he only is hired until June. Yeah. So he is not guaranteed any position past June. But his, but this position would be become 0 0.67? Yes, but in this budget. Yes. yes. Okay. Which could allow social studies to do um, um, an elective or keep some of their class sizes down, which is okay. what they've been asking for for a while. Okay. Now we're going to move over to the GLP. We're going to beat Sean's department up again. They need a 0.5 additional special education teacher. It's to be determined who that position would go to. It has not been posted. This is all contingent on the budget. At Eden Elementary, we've had increased class sizes, increased enrollment, which is creating that bubble we had at third grade now has moved to fourth grade, but we don't see any shortcoming of third graders, so we have to move a teacher and the specials over to the elementary to increase those. So those are the items that you see the PE so, teacher. So what you've session. seen happen in the past years is we had six teachers at the elementary, we went to five, we went down to four, and now we're working our way back up to five. We have five kindergarten, five first, five second, five third, oh. and this will make five fourth. Okay. okay. And then transportation, we need to add another special education one, so a driver will need to be hired for four hours per day. And then state mandates are requiring we get do some paperwork and get some things caught up over in PPS, and so our psych will be a 0.4 one year psych increase. So those new positions will cost us $183,314, which is $91,184 less than the breakage that we plan to achieve from the retirements. Did we, the community money, that's him. That's this one. Right, that's the yeah. Joe. That's right. Joe Weiss. Yeah. Okay. The community money is not additional funds. We're getting $30,708, I believe is the number. It showed up on our state aid runs as community funding. That's not additional funds, folks. That's They're taking our state aid and they're saying, you must spend right. this on oh. these initiatives. But we figured out a way to spend it. Well, that, well, that is Joe. part of it, yes. Okay. Joe doing that. Yeah. Do we know, just out of curiosity, of the teachers we have, how many are uh, part-time status? You know that off the top of your head? No, no, I don't, but when the budget book look at it is ready, that information will okay. be in there. 
So any staffing questions? There's a lot of information, a lot of talking. Dan? It's asleep at the wheel. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I've been for a couple of coffees. All right. Next, we're going to move on to benefits. And I am pleased to announce that our benefits are only going up 1.59% next year. That's wonderful. And I'm going to give kudos out to our staff. The district in late November went out and we went to our health insurance carriers, the local ones. We went to Univera, we went to Independent House and Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And we said, give us exact plans and what will you charge me for those? Well, we came back with a $298,234 savings to the district. There's additional savings that goes to the individual people. As, of course, the district does not pay 100% of health insurance. Each contract is negotiated differently for the percentage of employee contribution. This has been the most amazing partnership I have seen since I've been here in the district. The unions, through the Labor Management Oversight Committee, I have nothing but heartfelt gratitude for them allowing this change to occur for us to save these funds that help us move the district in the correct direction and keep our costs down. Mm -hmm. We uh, partnered with a great consulting company, Smola Consulting out of Rochester. They did a wonderful job in going out beating up the carriers and getting us some good pricing. So we will be a Univera Health District on July 1st. So I just wanted to make sure I point out that a huge part of our savings, there's not usually much I can do in benefits, comes from that partnership with every employee in the district. And I know it's a scary thing because everybody, myself included, we're going from something we know to someone we don't know, and we're trusting them with our health insurance. So it is a huge, huge positive environment that we were able to accomplish this. But we did do a lot of research to show that 98% of the providers would be kept. So it's basically they'll, yes. they'll see the same professionals and everything. I think we were very, we said with the board, we were very careful on keeping everybody keeping their same health care professionals. Yes, but I'm certain that there will be some that may not have the best experience because maybe their carrier, their professional is one of the 4%, the 2 4%. 98% mm -hmm. stays the same. All right, then the 2%. So the things that we are mandated the first line item, employee retirement. That is our support staff. That is New York State Employee Retirement System, ERS. That is going up $234,000. Oh our teachers, their percentage has gone down. So our teachers retirement, TRS, is only going up $23,855. Our Social Security, which is what is contributed to the, by the district for every dollar, 7.65 cents on every dollar goes to pay for Social Security and Medicare for That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. a federal mandate. None of these are under our workers' compensation, mm -hmm. we were able to adjust our number downward a little bit this year because we're in a consortium and that's just the way the numbers went this year. We had a $460 savings. Our unemployment insurance, we have set aside $26,880. I want to explain unemployment. In districts, in New York, across New York State, we do not fund unemployment. We do not pay into the state and federal systems as regular businesses do. So if we fire someone or someone gets laid off, we have to pay their full unemployment cost. That's why we budget funds because I can't come back in January and say, you know, one of our new people just didn't work out. We had to fire them. 
and there's no money in the budget to do it. So that's why we budget for unemployment, and we keep that at a static level, which hasn't increased in years, and we've been fortunate that we didn't have to change that. Then we're looking at, um, we have health insurance for the 105H. That is some of the coverage for the CSEA employees. We have health insurance HRA, which has gone up $96,698. The main reason that number has climbed is because in the breakage, when we have retirees contractually, they get paid out a portion of their sick time based on their individual contracts. So that number is added into last year's number, and because we have so many retirees this year, that's the increased cost. And then this one's going to raise a few eyebrows because it says Medicare reimbursement and retiree health insurance. We have still some retirees out there who retired under different contracts and we're still obligated to pay towards their Medicare and their health insurance. These are not recent retirements at this point in time. I don't know if any district in New York State that's looking to add a benefit back for life health insurance for anyone. It's just way too expensive. We are blessed that it was written out of our contracts when it did. It keeps our liability down on our financial statements. And this is a huge cost for districts across the state. So all in all, our total benefits are going up $109,554, or 1.59%. Mm -hmm. And that concludes my presentation for this evening. If oh, yeah, anyone has excellent. any questions. Wow. These were all, there was nothing we could do with these increases, correct? Pardon me? Lord, there was nothing we could do. These were all required increases, weren't they? No, they're not. Well, they're not. Some are based on salaries and things like they're that. Just, they're just good, they're good decisions in my opinion. They are not all required. Um, what is it required, Cindy? Well, some of the additions. Was he only staff. talking benefits? I thought he was I th talking benefits. I thought he was talking benefits. Oh, just benefits? Yeah, I thought he was talking benefits. Yeah. Oh, oh, talking benefits. benefits. yeah. Oh, if you're just talking oh. benefits, then no, there's oh. not much we Yeah, the benefits, we, we had no choice. Correct. Correct. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Cindy. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Is that it? That's it. Yay. That's very good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.